Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2019, the 15th day of Adar Aleph, the first Adar 5779. Thanks so much for joining us. You can get in touch with me during the week, josh at thelandofisrael.com on Facebook. Check out my new page, Josh Haston Israel Advocacy and Journalism on Twitter at Josh Haston. Now, normally, of course, I broadcast on Mondays, but I was just on vacation in beautiful northern Israel, and I had an amazing time. So I took off Sunday and Monday. I didn't do my show, and here I am in Jerusalem recording on this Wednesday. Had a wonderful time. So nice up there this time of year. I mean, it's always nice throughout the land of Israel and all the different parts, north, south, east, west, but had a wonderful time in the mountains of the Carmel Forest overlooking the Mediterranean, just a little R&R. We got some news for you here today, and then we will have on, if everything goes according to plan, Gedalia Blum, co-founder of Dape Katom. It's like the yellow pages, but Katom means orange. It's the orange pages, business listings in Judea and Samaria, trying to promote small businesses in Judea and Samaria. He also runs the handle on Twitter called No to BDS and other important initiatives on behalf of the people of Israel here in the land of Israel. So we'll be speaking to him in just a few minutes. And we'll get to the news here. Also, today is actually, I don't think I would call it a holiday, but it is Shushan Purim Katan. Yesterday was Purim Katan. This, I'll try to explain this. Hopefully it'll work out. This year, the holiday of Purim is in the second month of Adar. When you have a leap year on the Jewish calendar, there are two months of Adar. To make a long story short, Passover must be in the spring when it's starting to get warm outside. And that is in Nisan. So if we have a situation where Passover is not going to fall out in the spring, more or less, and I'm not a rabbi, um, then you add an extra month, an extra Adar. So normally, normally Purim would be on the 14th of Adar, but this year Purim is on the 14th of the second Adar. But we still semi-celebrate the fact that Purim would have been on the 14th of Adar in the first month of Adar. Is that complicated? I mean, it sounds pretty complicated. I'm here with my main man, Benjamin Bresky. But, um, so it's a minor holiday yesterday, and today is Shushan Purim Katan, uh, if this were a normal, called a normal, if you want, for a better choice of words, year, today would be Shushan Purim. But those two days are pushed off to next month, but we still commemorate when they would have, when Purim would have been in the month of Adar. So yesterday, um, a small, I guess, very, very minor, but but fun holiday, it's a small Purim, if you will. And today, a small Shushan Purim, those who keep the Purim, in all of the walled cities from the time of Joshua. If there's any confusion on any of that, consult your local Orthodox rabbi or, or the rabbi of your choice, or you can email me, josh at thelandofisrael.com. I'll probably turn you over to one of the other rabbis on the station, like Yishai Fleischer or Jeremy Gimpel or Arya Abramowitz. They could probably explain it a little bit better if it was confusing. But at the end of the day, let's just celebrate a little bit uh, more than we normally would on just a regular Wednesday. Anyway, here we're going to get to some news and then Gedalia Blum. Getting back on track here, uh, Israel to deduct over 500 million shekel from cash collected for the Palestinian Authority. This perhaps is the news of the week, according to the Jerusalem Post. Israel will deduct more than half a billion shekels it collects in tariffs for the PA because of payments the PA makes to terrorists and their families. The security cabinet decided on Sunday. This was a ruling that was already passed, but now it looks like it will be enforced. According to Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu and his office, security officials told the cabinet that in 2018, get this, the PA paid $140 million to terrorists imprisoned in Israeli jails, their families, and to security prisoners who have been released. Netanyahu instructed the cabinet rather the security echelon, to further investigate the scope of the payments and to adjust the sums to be deducted. Again, this is back to a July 7th of last year ruling in the Knesset requiring the defense ministry 
to inform the security cabinet of how much the PA pays in so-called welfare payments to terrorists and their families, which will be deducted from the amount Israel transfers to the PA each month. Israel transfer these tariffs, uh, transfers these tariffs to the PA each month, and that amount which the PA uses to pay um, terrorists, that will be deducted. This is similar to the Taylor Force Act passed in the U.S., which ended most U.S. assistance to the uh, so-called Palestinians unless the PA stops payments to terrorists and their families. So this is a, a, a huge breakthrough. I mean, for years, it was ridiculous. Israel was turning over money, and money's being used by the Palestinian Authority to fund uh, those terrorists who carry out atrocious crimes against humanity, against the Jewish people here in the land of Israel, murder not only of Israelis, Americans as well, tourists, and anybody who got in the path of the jihadists um, and were killed. So we were turning a blind eye and continuing to turn over money to the PA. And in addition to this, by the way, Israel is not cutting off the PA entirely. I read somewhere yesterday that Israel still turns over a huge chunk of change to the Palestinian Authority each month. But this is a step in the right direction. The PA threatened earlier, this month if Israel deducts the funds, they will not accept any of the money. Israel transfers to it under the terms of Oslo. As I just said, it's here. Oh, it actually says it here in the Jerusalem Post, more than $100 million a month. We still transfer over $100 million a month, and they're, and they're threatening they're not going to accept any of that money if we try to stop their pay-to-slay program. Now, I want to clarify exactly what the situation is, and our good friend Maurice Hirsch, head of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch, explains it, uh, reported here by JNS. There's a big however to this whole story of Israel withholding payments to the Palestinian Authority. Uh, so Maurice Hirsch tells JNS, we welcome the decision of the government as a great start. However, however, here's the however, Hirsch emphasized that the government only deducted the payments to terrorist prisoners and released prisoners, okay? Only to terrorist prisoners and those who were released. The government, according to Hirsch, did not touch, at this point, the PA payments to the families of dead or wounded terrorists. So we're only withholding, at this point, payments to the prisoners, but not, we are not yet withholding the payments to the families of those terrorists who were killed or wounded trying to murder Jews. And that, and that is uh, very, very important to understand. It's not a full withhold, withholding of funds. It is a partial withholding of funds. I would say Israel should go forward and with, withhold all the funds, whether it's a terrorist in prison, whether it's a terrorist's family who was, uh, who is, was receiving payments, if their son or daughter, or whomever decided they were going to murder Jews, and in their view became a martyr, Israel should, with, with, should withhold all payments to all of those categories. Uh, Hirsch explained, it's just he said, it's just a shame that the Ministry of Defense didn't use the last six months since the law was passed in order to calculate the amount the PA pays to the families of the dead and wounded terrorists. So it's a start. Let's give Israel credit for that. Let's give our government credit for that. It is a start but it's certainly not enough at this point, but it is a good start. Switching gears here, and this is something that I uh, posted um, as I manage the Gush Etzion, uh, Municipal uh, Facebook page and the Gush Etzion Foundation page. We had another case of uh, agricultural terrorism in Gush Etzion uh, just the other day. Uh, Arabs entering into the cherry orchards and uh, grape vineyards and destroying the trees, attacking the trees, attacking the vines. Uh, we're talking about thousands and thousands of shekels and damage, actually also reported by the Jerusalem Post. The head of the Gush Etzion Regional Council, Shlomo Neman, said we must take steps to eradicate agricultural terror and fight terror in all its cruel forms. His comments came in a statement on Sunday, several days ago, some 200 vines and cherry trees belonging to Kibbutz, Kibbutz Kvar Etzion were uprooted and destroyed by Arab. They call them here vandals. I'm going to say terrorists. And this is how it starts, starts folks. We talked about this before. First, they attack our trees and our property, and they, then they attack our people. 
This is agricultural terrorism, of course, not reported by um, the international media. If this was reversed, and if a Jew would do something as heinous as this, it would be front page on, on, all, on all the newspapers, and uh, Israel would get blasted for this. Um, but here you have uh, igno an ignored phenomenon which happens time and time again and happened a lot over the summer, whether it was arson or destroying of property, destruction of property or tearing down these uh, innocent trees, cutting down these trees. But here you have another case in Gush Etzion, 200 vines um, and trees destroyed by these agricultural terrorists. Um, other cases in recent uh, weeks, vines destroyed in Shiloh and in Hebron belonging to Jews. So this is a, a major problem. Uh, if, if they care so much about um, the land of Israel, well, they don't call it Israel, they call it something else. If they care so much about it, who destroys land that they claim that they love, okay? But then again, really, what they're trying to do is they're trying to scare the Jews here in Israel, trying to force us off our land, that's not going to happen. We'll continue. We'll replant, and um, those trees will, will, will grow again, and we'll plant more trees, and we'll keep planting, and we'll keep growing uh, in our fields and in our vineyards. But there needs to be, whether it's agricultural terrorism, where, where, whether it's the daily terror attacks on, on the roads, which I try to emphasize uh, when I post on social media, there has to be a deterrence. Because, again, it starts with the trees, then it moves on to the rocks, and then we're talking about stabbings and shootings and everything else. You have to nip it in the bud at the very beginning. Before we go to break, and then Gedalia Blum, some positive news. Uh, the Kinneret, the Lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, is rising as a result of all the rain we've had this winter, reported here by JNS. A particularly rainy winter has raised the level of the Kinneret by nearly... It's 4.9 feet for the, those who are listening in America. I'm not sure what that is in meters. I don't have the calculation with me here. 4.9 feet, a relief given that it dropped by 4.1 feet during the summer of 2018, leaving the critical water source just 7.5 inches from the black line. That, that's the line where the water no longer becomes, uh, no, longer, no longer is drinkable. So we have all these measurements, red lines and black lines there on the Kinneret. But at the end of the day, Ending this segment of the show with some positive news as a result of all the rain. It's been a pretty wet winter here uh, in Israel. Thank God the winter is still going on. We have really a, technically another month of winter here. And that's why that all ties into the fact why we have another month of Adar and a Purim Katan. See, it all ties back together. But it's still winter, and please God, it should keep raining uh, over the Kinneret and throughout the land of Israel. Rain is a true blessing here. Um, taking a short break, we're going to come right back. Again, my name is Josh Haston. If you're just tuning in, this is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com on a special Wednesday show broadcasting here from Jerusalem on the 20th of February, 2019, the 15th of Adar Aleph, the first Adar 5779. You can always get in touch with me during the week, Josh at thelandofisrael.com. My new Facebook page, Josh Haston, Israel Advocacy and Journalism, and also on Twitter at Josh Hasten. Oh, Instagram. Yeah, I just started Instagram, so you can check me out on Instagram as well. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. For Rosh Chodesh Adar Bet, this coming new moon, we are doing the Land of Israel Network Shabbaton at the Dead Sea, called the Israel Inspired Retreat, where there's going to be Torah study and connection and meditation and prayer. And we're going to be able to connect and to talk about everything that's going on in Israel today on spiritual levels. It's going to be a really special weekend. You can find out about it on thelandofisrael.travel. That's thelandofisrael.travel. You can see all the details there. We'd love to have you join us. And we are back. Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2019. It is the 15th of Adar, Olive 5779. And we're going to go to the phone right now. A good friend of mine, Gedalia Blum, co-founder of Dape Katom. Those are the uh, yellow, it's like the yellow pages, but it's Katom in Hebrew is orange. So it's the orange pages, listings of 
businesses in Judea and Samaria, small businesses. Uh, Gedalia helps promote those businesses through his site, Dape Katom. In addition, he runs the handle on Twitter, no to BDS, which has thousands of followers. Gedalia is at the forefront of fighting against the anti-Israel haters and those who are trying to BDS the Jewish state. I also want to talk about the Judean Roundtable, something that I am proud to be a part of, and we'll get to that in a few minutes and explain that. Gedalia, welcome to the show. Israel Uncensored here. Hey, Josh, how's it going? I think the last time we sat together, we were wearing uh, armored war helmets, I believe, right? Yeah, that was yeah, last that was week's last week. <laughs> Judean Roundtable, if anybody missed that, and we're going to talk about that in just a few <laughs> minutes. Give us the latest update. How are things going with the Pekatom, the Orange Pages listing of Jewish businesses, promoting Jewish business, small businesses in Judea and Samaria? Well, I mean, as uh, as we've been doing for the last 10 years, we've been focusing on, and as you said, that we're fighting against BDS. We're not fighting necessarily against their policies. We're fighting against uh, them uh, de delegitimizing uh, Israel's right to live and grow in Judea and Samaria. And so the way that we're fighting it is by strengthening the lifeline uh, of of growth, which is the economy. So the more money in small business people's hands, the more money they invest, the more people they hire, the more we build, the more we grow, and the more opportunity there is. So that's really our focus. And uh, in the last, I'll tell you, in the last six months, ever since this Airbnb thing uh, happened, where Airbnb decided that they were going to delist all of the properties for rent on their on their platform that are located in Judean Samaria, we have gotten an avalanche of of inquiries to say why don't you have some why don't you have a booking uh, site why don't you have tours and why don't you have this why don't you have that and so right now we're really sitting on a great opportunity to really um, revolutionize and upgrade our our technologies our our capabilities so instead of just being uh, domestic uh, you know yellow pages uh, we're looking to be more of an international Amazon meets Yelp meets travel advisor. So in other so words, in other though, words, what you're, so saying, what you're saying, is saying is that, that all, the all the attention which you got, got from Airbnb actually backfired. It helped to promote those uh, B&Bs in Judea and Samaria and businesses in general. Well, exactly. And I'll tell you what, and, 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 and we heard the same thing when we sat in uh, Sagot Winery for the Judean Roundtable, which we'll speak about later. But they also were boycotted by BDS, which in fact... Uh, created such fuel for their supporters that even just in the last couple of weeks, they they signed this multi-million dollar contract with China, and so the you know I'll I'll you know give you know give the audience a uh, insight a little secret about my experience with BDS is that BDS is a um, it's a campaign for anti-Semitism. I think that's across the board. People understand that, but it's not necessarily a campaign that is growing. Or is really significant because it, it, they're they're just a campaign that's very well organized, and they do have a they do have a very loud voice, and they do need to be fought because when you when good people are silent, when there's evil in this world and the evil grows, and so it's our job, despite the fact that BDS and anti Semites might be a, a minority in 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 in, in this world, uh, we have to do something about it. So. What we were, what we are, what we are is we are a call to action for the silent majority of people who support Israel. And so that's all people are looking for. They're looking for that call to action that, you know, they hear BDS, they hear this, they want to shut them down. But on the other side of it, when they hear something about Airbnb, they say, they say you know, aside from lawsuits against Airbnb for discrimination, what could we do to make sure that things like this become irrelevant in the future and that's investing in Israel and that's what we are we are a conduit for people to want to pick up the pen and to write their own page in history by supporting Israel and supporting its growth and making sure that you know we're strong for the for the next 50 100 2000 years I mean to that so let's talk about the battle on Twitter I mean this is a 24 7 battle taking place on one of the you know many social media outlets out there, but your page, uh, no to BDS, you have thousands and thousands of followers. I mean, tell me, how do you feel in terms of the impact uh, that Twitter handle, no to BDS or at no to BDS, has 
uh, in the overall uh, fight uh, against BDS, of course, BDS seeking to delegitimize the state of Israel. W- what, how can you? How can one measure, you know, actual impact from, you know, from something like that? Is it people signing on to campaigns? Is it, uh, you know, petitions? Uh, you know, whatever it is. What? How do you? How do you measure or gauge you right. know, how effective that type of uh, a tool is um, to combat the BDS Israel haters? So, if you ask me that question about about four months ago or five months, or, you know, four months ago, five months ago, I would have said, you know what, I can't measure anything. So therefore, it's probably not so valuable because if you can't measure something, it's not valuable for me as a marketer, as a salesperson. I do consulting for other businesses as, uh, as well. We work with other businesses. So I always you always want to set up some sort of metrics to see whether or not you're going in the right direction. But I learned a really, really big lesson. And the big lesson came following the murder of our friend Ari Fold, um, that that the the immeasurable impact that he was making when he was alive, like you you couldn't measure it. You 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 just didn't know. And then after he was killed, and all of these people, and all the press, and all these people coming out with the stories and this, that, of what he was doing, and how important it was every single morning that, or every single Friday that he had a Torah, every single time something happened, they would go to his page to see to see the real story. And so, I don't know what the impact is for my Twitter no to BDS, but I know that it's 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 not a um, it's not a lone voice, but there aren't a lot of voices. So I think it's really important to make sure that we are at least telling our story from here. I don't have, listen, I don't have any, there's no budget going into no to BDS. It's completely right. voluntary. It is, I, haven't, I haven't put one shekel into building up a 30,000 uh, know, follower account. But what I will say is that the advantage for me against BDS, despite the fact that BDS is organized, they have a lot of money, EU funding, all these different things. They are over there. They're not in Israel. They're far away. They're 6,000 miles away telling lies about Israel. But I'm here. I'm, I don't need to tell lie. I don't need to tell the truth about Israel. I only need to show the truth about Israel. And that's where my advantage is for no to BDS because I try as much as I can not to tweet articles and whatever it is, but actually to create content and to show people. So I think that's really, you know, when you ask me what impact there is, I don't know what impact there is, but I do know that there is some impact where um, where we saw again with with our friend Ari. Speaking of getting out the truth from here, from Israel, um, for those of you who don't know, and I've talked about this on my show, on a regular basis, we have here in Israel what's called the Judean Roundtable, and Gedalia is the producer and director of a, I would call it a bi-monthly Facebook video program initially we were doing live videos and now they are recorded and then aired shortly after of some of uh, some of our good friends here at the at the station land of israel network are involved in it aria bromwitz and shai fleischer and others who are i would say at the top of the pro israel anglo community here in israel we get together from a different location and we film these videos we've been in hebron we've been in ofra We've been in, uh, in many other places throughout the country with a focus on Judea and Samaria in order to share the stories of the people who live in these areas who are making a difference and get the truth out. Uh, we also did one in Tekoa specifically to counter that uh, Airbnb uh, boycott. Um, for those who may not have heard about the Judean Roundtable, just give a short summary um, of what exactly it is, what our goal is. Again, Full disclosure, I'm full, fully a part of this wonderful, amazing initiative uh, by Gedalia. What is it? Uh, and explain the goals of the Judean Roundtable and maybe give a little sneak peek as to what the next show is going to be about, if you'd like to do so. Sure. Well, I mean, I'll start off by saying that this is this is a group effort and I hardly would take uh, all, all credit or, or credit for, for this project. But uh, with that being said... Uh, it actually came from you, uh, Josh, where after the, the murder of Ari, Ari Fold uh, uh, it happened, uh, we were chatting with each other and saying, you know, we worked with Ari for, for so many years and we, you know, on a weekly basis and we met we, all these different things we did, but we didn't know any real personal stories about him. 
in that he wasn't a very, oh, you know, he wasn't a close person, but it just didn't come down to it where we were talking about our kids and where we're from and all these different stories. So, you know, we were talking and saying, you know what, we don't know much about each other either, either personally. So, you, you know, you organized this barbecue with friends of Ari and, and friends together, and we're all sitting around together and having really just an amazing conversation, just telling stories. Everybody, everybody went around the, uh, everybody went around the table. It was telling a very short story about each, each, you know, about ourselves, and talking about Israel and how we got involved. And at that point, I just, I looked at the, looked around the table, and I said, there are a lot of pro-Israel. Everybody here was pro-Israel advocates with large followings, email lists, Facebook page. I said, why don't we just all take this conversation that we're having in private and go live with it and bring other people into this circle? And I think that's where it, it was birthed from is that, you know, we have really great conversations because they're very, you know, they're very knowledgeable, in-depth. People are on top of their games. They're, you know, we have Yishai Fleischer, who's a spokesperson for Chevron. You're the spokesperson of Gush Etzion. Avi Abelo, he's a, he's a giant in the, in the social media world. And so, you know, Ben Goldstein, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, the Ruth Lieberman, you know, these people who are involved in the Judean Roundtable are are really a force to be reckoned with. And I think that by putting everybody under kind of at one table to discuss and to share with each other's audience, it's really about collaboration to really get the truth about Israel. So that's where it came from. And, and, uh, and you know, we've only, what have we done? About 12 shows already, which is miraculous. Again, this is all in the memory of Ari Fold. And again, no one's getting paid for it. We don't have any budget for it. We, did ha we do have uh, an amazing friend, uh, Dan, uh, you know, Dan Caskell from Florida, who loved what we were doing. He actually joined us on one of our shows who purchased right. uh, this amazing camera for us and, and lights and microphone. And um, and so, you know, it's 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 really we're doing it out of the love of Israel and what what Ari did, you know, just out of the love of sharing the truth. And, and so it's I think it's miraculous that, you know, Ruth Lieberman, who is who has been on the show as part of the circle of the Judean Roundtable, had a suggestion that. Right now, she's hosting two congresses, you know, uh, uh, from the U.S. and suggested that they come onto the Judean Roundtable. So, you, you know, for me, being part of a project that is that we had no funding, we just did it out of love, uh, out of memory of Ari for love of Israel, and now we have today, we're going to be uh, pre-recording, uh, we're going to be recording um, our next Judean Roundtable with two U.S. congressmen. I, I think that's just just amazing so for those of you who are listening to this i mean this show is going out here wednesday the 20th of february 2019 so the judean roundtable today is going to be recording with two u.s congressmen and then it will uh most likely be available on facebook tomorrow thursday the 21st just to give reference to those who may not be listening to the show exactly today but if you miss uh the i guess the the first showing on Thursday, you can always go to the Facebook page, the Judean Roundtable, and check out that show and all the other shows that we've done uh, mm -hmm. over the past several months. And Gedalia was being extremely humble there. Um, but, uh, you know, without his efforts uh, to put it all together and get everybody organized, it's not an easy task, especially with everyone's busy schedule, to make it happen. Uh, you know, Gedalia is certainly the, uh, the director, I'll call him, and producer of, of that initiative. Uh, we are nearly out of time here, Gedalia, but I want people to be able to get in touch with you, whether it is finding businesses on, on uh, Dape Katom, um, looking for small businesses to reach out to in Judea and Samaria, if you need a plumber, if you want to go out to dinner, if whatever it is, in order to get people uh, updated on, on wh where they can turn to, how can people get in touch with the Pekatom, get in touch with you and um, and the important work that you're doing? Yeah, so I mean, email uh, dkatom, D-K-A-T-O-M, uh, at dkatom.coil. You could send us an email there. Uh, if you're looking for businesses, you could go to dkatom.coil. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, uh, Gedalia Bloom. On Facebook, uh, Twitter at no 2 bds If you want to, um, you know, if you want to connect, you like what the idea about, uh, you know, economic sovereignty and building infrastructure for the future uh, business environment of Judea and Samaria to allow continued growth. Uh, you know, connect with me. We're looking also, we're, you know, we're always looking for partners. So, uh, so that's how you that's how you reach me.
Kedaya, have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Good luck with this week's roundtable. And uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing you in the very near future. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's program. If you missed any of the show, of course, you can always listen to it on demand. Go back to our there are very various ways you can hear the program, either on the website of thelandofisrael.com, on Facebook, of course, or on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, many opportunities to go back. And of course, go listen to all the other wonderful programming here at Land of Israel Network and the wonderful show hosts all doing their thing, getting the truth out about the land of Israel. That's going to do it for today, the 20th of February, 2019, the 15th day of Adar Aleph 5779. Don't forget, you can get in touch with me during the week, Josh, at thelandofisrael.com. On Facebook, check out my new page, Josh Haston Israel Advocacy and Journalism, on Twitter, at Josh Haston. Um, in addition, big shout out to Binyamin Bresky for all the amazing work he does. Without him, we couldn't get these shows up. And Tabitha Epstein who makes it all happen behind the scenes here at the Land of Israel Network. Wishing everyone out there a wonderful week from a beautiful Jerusalem. Most importantly, between now and when we speak again, please, God, I'll be back on Monday. That's the plan after this vacation week. Back next Monday for the next show. Most importantly, out there in the wonderful world of ours, everybody out there, be safe. Shalom, shalom from Jerusalem. It's much more real than any reality show. It's much more dramatic than any drama. It's much more funny than any comedy. It's like a game show, but it's no game. It's our lives. Listen to Inside Israel Today with Gil Hoffman, political correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, every week on thelandofisrael.com.